Tunneling is a quantum effect where charges are found to flow through barriers that they should not be able to flow through. So one of the two major uh, mechanisms of uh, leakage in a MOSFET is tunneling. Specifically, we are talking about gate tunneling. Uh, first of all, let me explain the phenomenon of tunneling, what it means, and then let's consider gate tunneling current as, um, as a specific phenomenon. So tunneling is a quantum effect, so it has to be understood in quantum uh, mechanics terms. Um, let's assume that you have a semiconductor on one side, uh, and this is the edge of the conduction band in that semiconductor, and then you have another semiconductor, and this is um, the edge of the conduction band on that semiconductor. Let's assume they are the, semi the same uh, kind of material, and in the middle between them, uh, they are separated by a uh, an insulator, and so that insulator has a large band gap, right? So the insulator has a large band gap, much larger than that of the uh, semiconductor, and therefore it offers a uh, barrier, an energy barrier to electrons on both sides. This is in fact what I've just drawn is the band diagram of a MOSFET with a polysilicon gate. Uh, this is specifically the flat band band diagram. The flat band situation occurs when the transistor is cut off. So this is actually perfect for our, uh, for our, uh, for illustrating our case because it, it reflects how gate tunneling would actually occur. So uh, this amount, this barrier is around 3.3 electron volts. If the insulator used in the middle is uh, is uh, silicon dioxide, and so this is Eb, and Eb in this case is 3.3 electron volts. Electrons uh, that manage to get into the conduction band from the valence band or from donor levels or acceptor levels, uh, actually for only from donor levels, those electrons that manage to get in the con to the conduction band are not able to pass to the other side. The same is true for electrons uh, on the conduction band of the other side. Let's just assume that this side is the gate and this side is the channel, just because this is the case that we have here. So an electron on the channel side is unable to pass to the uh, gate side and vice versa because of the barrier uh, of the oxide, because they have to pass through the band gap of the, uh, of the oxide. However, some electrons uh, are so energetic, uh, they, are, they acquire enough thermal energy that they are a little bit high up in the conduction band. Now, if these electrons also manage to acquire some extra energy so that they uh, uh, overall have more energy than 3.3 uh, electron volts, then they can actually surmount this energy barrier. This is something called the hot carrier effect, and the hot carrier effect happens specifically near the drain because electrons manage to acquire the, all the extra energy they need as kinetic energy, specifically when we have velocity overshoot, the amount of kinetic energy they have allows them to have more energy than 3.3 electron volts. And in that case, the electron exists here. And so it can actually, if there is a favorable electric field, it will actually pass through the oxide because it's actually passing through the conduction band of the insulator, the oxide, which we never had to think about just because the band gap was too high in our, in, uh, in our view. This electron passing through the conduction band is not tunneling. It is not tunneling. This is a hot carrier effect, which we'll talk about in detail. And the hot carrier effect is a classical or a semi-classical uh, uh, charge flow mechanism that can be fully explained using the band model. What we are talking about is these electrons at the bottom of the conduction band or somewhere uh, within the conduction band on either side, but not above the energy barrier of the oxide, these electrons actually manage to pass through the oxide and end up on the other side. So they are passing through a band gap. This is tunneling. And it is not something that we can explain using the band model. Using the band model, the band gap, and I'm using a, an ideal uh, uncharged oxide without any trap states or anything. There's nothing in the oxide that allows the electron to flow through it. And yet it does. Why? 
Uh, this actually has to do with uh, two modern uh, physics concepts that we did not talk about when we developed the band model. First of all is the particle wave duality of, uh, of everything, but specifically of electrons. And the second is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So um, you can think of it in terms of the particle wave duality. So the electrons on the gate side or on the channel side, depending on the direction of voltage that you apply, are like wave packets. And they approach the barrier uh, as waves with large amplitudes. Uh, on the other side, they manage to uh, emerge as waves with much smaller amplitudes. So the barrier has basically absorbed some of the amplitude of the electrons. So what does the amplitude actually represent? The amplitude represents the probability that we will find the electron on the other side. So the probability that we will find the electron on this side is really high. The probability that we will find that it has passed to the other side is much smaller, but it is finite. And that is what's interesting. This is what tunneling is all about. There is a finite probability that we will find it on the other side. It can also be explained in terms of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which says that even though you think the electron is on the gate side, the electron might actually be on the channel side because he can never actually have 100% certainty about the position of the electron. And this is, this is much deeper and much more fundamental than just probability um, along the lines of the Fermi Dirac probability statistics. No, this is a fundamental uncertainty about the position of the electron, so fundamental in fact that you might actually find the electron on the other side even though um, it was just on the, on, on the gate side. And because electrons are consistently managing to move through this barrier that they shouldn't be moving through, this will cause a constant flux and this constant flux will cause a current. We call this current tunneling current. So it's important to understand that when electrons tunnel, they're not actually passing through the oxide physically. So don't think of them as moving through the oxide. They just manage to appear on the other side. This is important because uh, hot carriers, hot electrons are actually moving through the oxide, which makes them um, susceptible to trap states. Tunneling electrons are not susceptible to trap states. There's one more thing about uh, tunneling. There are two types of uh, tunneling that could happen. One is called direct tunneling, and direct tunneling is when the electron uh, flows through the entire width of the uh, of the uh, 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 insulator, which is what's happening here. Sometimes when the insulator is exposed to a very large field, the insulator uh, will tilt this way, and then some electrons on one of the two sides might actually have to go through um, uh, a smaller uh, a smaller subsection of the uh, insulator because of the tilt. So uh, some of the electrons would actually have to go through a much thinner uh, insulator than they, the ones that have to go through the entire width. This kind of tunneling is called a Fowler-Nordheim tunneling and is not usually the kind of tunneling we are uh, concerned about when we uh, talk about leakage because the kinds of fields required to uh, cause fallen Nordheim tunneling are usually very high. Uh, FM tunneling is more common when we talk about uh, flash rams or non-volatile memories in general than they are when we talk about uh, leakage.